Hello, everybody. Uh, it's an incredible honor to stand before you today. My name is John Romero, and I am a technologist and a lifelong game developer. One piece of news, my company uh, had its project canceled last week, and we're developers' leadership offered to help us in any way that they could. And that was such a wonderful gesture, and we really treasure our long connection to we're developers since the beginning. So someone who's spent my life creating virtual worlds, I'm grateful for the invitation to speak here at uh, We Are Developers 2025, where you are shaping the future of our real world. So this afternoon, I'm going to share with you what game cheaters can teach, teach us about cybersecurity. So in games, we face threats that may look trivial, like cheats and hacks and exploits. However, these challenges cost the industry an estimated $29 billion in lost revenue every year. Add to this an estimated $13.5 billion spent on integrating anti-cheat software into games, and $50 million in black market revenue siphoned away from game companies. These relentless challenges from cheaters and hackers exploit systems for their advantage, and it is big business. It's particularly problematic in the first-person shooter genre that I co-created in 1993 with Doom. Competitive games like Fortnite, Battlefield, Call of Duty, they're dependent on a fair game. Research shows that 78% of consumers would abandon a game plagued by cheating, leading to significant future revenue loss. And a competitive game without players? Well, that game is finished. These challenges are hardly new, when I got started in game development in 1979, we copy-protected floppy disks to prevent cheating and theft. And as our anti-copy tech advanced, so did the disk-cracking tech used by pirates. It's been a cat-and-mouse game ever since, and now that games are online, that is our current battlefield. And as for its scale, well, today, every major game serves millions of players. We keep order in a virtual city the size of Dubai every night. So what are common uh, cheating methods in games? Obviously, there's aimbots. Uh, they allow players to automatically hit their targets. It's probably the, one of the most popular methods of cheating. Wall hacks let players see enemy outlines through walls, making it really easy to see every single threat coming your way. Speed hacks let players travel faster than other players, obviously giving them a, an unfair advantage. Currency exploits allow cheaters to easily purchase all the items they want to gain several advantages. And in some games, cheat programs would modify game code that's running in memory in order to bypass cheat detection systems. And perhaps not surprising to a room full of coders, there's also sabotage. Some players try to cause network latency to slow down other players' games or to force those games to disconnect. And more, we deal with constant attempts to break the rules. And it's an arms race, just like in cybersecurity. So we often imagine game cheats as side projects like, you know, some bored teenager on GitHub making an aimbot. But some operations are closer to full-scale software as a service businesses, complete with payments, infrastructure, and support. So let's take a look at one of the most infamous examples. In 2021, a group operating out of Kunshan near Shanghai was caught running what can only be described as a startup for cheatware. It had subscription-based pricing, tiered product offerings, anti-detection updates, and customer service. Their operation was so lucrative that they pulled in $76 million in revenue. This wasn't malware on the USB stick. This was enterprise-grade software engineering. They offered cheats for competitive games like Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Valorant, and users could subscribe weekly, monthly, or annually. The software featured injected code, hardware spoofing, encrypted authentication, and anti-debugging measures. From a technical standpoint, this was indistinguishable from a mid-sized software-as-a-service platform just running in the shadows. Behind the scenes, their backend had a license server with key generation and revocation, 
a launcher with anti-reverse engineering techniques, custom obfuscation and runtime polymorphism, low-level hooks into game engines, and rendering stacks. If you've ever built a dev tool, a launcher, or a game mod, a lot of this probably sounds familiar, and that's what makes this so wild. It's not unlike what many of us build every day. So there's a lot we can learn here, even if their intent was malicious. This group prioritized stealth and uptime exactly like high availability services. They built for cross-platform compatibility, a huge challenge for cheats. And they iterated rapidly to evade detection, like dealing with shifting API surfaces. It's a reminder that technical excellence isn't always ethical, but it's always worth studying. So if we want to build better anti-cheat tools, or even just more resilient systems in general, we need to think like engineers on both sides of the fence, because some of the most complex, creative systems in gaming are being built by the people trying to break it. And while some cheats are commercial software-as-a-service scale platforms, others look deceptively innocent until they're hacked to compete like superhuman players. Let's take a look uh, at an example. Rocket League is a hilarious and a super popular game where players play football with cars. It's extremely competitive, and top players can earn hundreds of thousands of dollars in tournaments. To help train players, a group built a series of AI bots for people to play against. One of these was a particularly talented bot called Next2. But before long, someone hacked Next2 to play in a human's place. And that led to big problems. The AI is literally superhuman. It can do things better and faster than we can. And the only way to detect a bot trained on AI is through AI, machine learning specifically. It's one of the latest techniques in this cat and mouse game. Once upon a time, game cheats were written by hand, you know, memory trainers, injected DLLs, you know, simple macros. Today, we're seeing AI used both to cheat and to stop cheating. Let's start with cheating powered by AI. Bots like Next2 are only the beginning. We're now seeing reinforcement learning agents that learn competitive maps vision-based agents that identify en enemies through the screen reading, not even memory injection, GPT-powered chatbots that simulate believable teammates in voice or text. These aren't just bots playing at human level. Some of them perform superhuman feats of aim, reaction time, and prediction. And ironically, the only way to reliably detect them is with more AI. On the defensive side, studios are now using machine learning models trained on millions of legitimate player sessions to establish what normal looks like. We're training AI to spot reflex times that defy human reaction speed, decision paths that are too perfect, too predictive, and movement vectors that mimic robotic smoothness. And the industry has moved from rule-based detection like flagging known DLLs or banned API calls, to behavioral detection. In fact, many studios no longer care what software is running, they care how you play. So it's no longer signature-based security, it's anomaly detection at scale. Think of it like an IDS system for player behavior. There are other tools that we use to detect human cheaters and cheating AI. Armed with AI and real-time analytics, we use real-time monitoring to auto-ban players and to flag suspicious activity. For example, games like Fortnite and Call of Duty have had banning waves where many players are removed from the game and they lose all the experience or the loot that they have collected. It is a substantial loss for them. They can create a new account, sure, but those cheating accounts will have lost everything they cheated for. We also encourage players to call the cheat patrol and report suspected AI agents or cheating players to the game operator. In essence, we track what normal looks like and then we catch the outliers. But let me tell you about the state of the art. <laughs> One of the biggest games out there is Valorant by Riot Games. Like many of the most competitive games, it's also a first-person shooter. Its players number in the tens of millions, and over five million people play it every single day. Riot Games also created League of Legends. As a competitive game, it's one of the biggest, with over 160 million players. 
and its tournaments fill entire stadiums from the U.S. to South Korea. Suffice to say that Riot Games knows something about create competitive games, and its creators needed to make sure that their new game Valorant did not fall prey to cheaters, bots, or scams. And to do so, uh, to do this, they had to create something both foolproof and lasting. And they developed what's known as the Vanguard system. Vanguard's a cutting-edge kernel-level anti-cheat tool used to detect and prevent sophisticated cheating methods. And when I say kernel-level, I mean that they have made it part of the operating system. It is as low-level as a non-native tool can get. It monitors system activity at the deepest level of the operating system, enabling real-time detection of unauthorized behavior before it affects gameplay. Vanguard represents one of the most ex advanced examples of behavioral intelligence and system integrity enforcement in the gaming industry today. Of course, it's not without its problems. Vanguard's system had issues when it was launched, reportedly even rendering some players' PCs unusable. These methods have also drawn growing concern due to their use of invasive protection methods that require access at the deepest layer of a computer's operating system. This can create sec serious security risks if any vulnerabilities exist. A failure or a crash in the anti-cheat driver could potentially destabilize or crash the player's PC. These are issues that the, work the industry is working hard to address through further technical investigation. Researchers at various universities and companies are now investigating how machine learning, coupled with computer vision, can identify anomalies to protect games without any potential risk or future security concerns. But here's where it gets even more interesting and more dangerous. The same techniques that we use to detect cheaters, cheaters are using to evolve. Just like in cybersecurity, we're seeing a feedback loop where cheaters use AI to test their own bots against detection systems. They retrain their agents with reinforcement learning to avoid bans. And this creates an arm race where every advance in detection leads to smarter evasion. Some cheat developers are now using adversarial ML techniques, think GANs, to fool behavior-based systems, just like hackers use adversarial patches to trick image classifiers. The future of cheat detection is going to look a lot like antivirus versus malware, but at human scale. When we talk about cheating in games, it's easy to think of it as just a technical problem. Bots and hacks, and maybe some frustrated players. But the economic footprint of cheating is massive and growing. In fact, game cheating today impacts revenue, retention, and reputation. So let's look at those numbers again. What is the most obvious cost? Direct revenue cost. Cheat developers are siphoning off money that would otherwise stay in the ecosystem. Estimates vary, but obviously, the global game industry loses around $29 billion annually to cheaters. And that includes players quitting early, refunded purchases, and black market transactions like account boosting and currency resale. And studios collectively spend another $13.5 billion integrating anti-cheat solutions, often custom-built, because off-the-shelf tools just don't cut it anymore. Cheaters don't just use these hacks privately. They monetize them through underground marketplaces, selling game accounts with high-level gear, renting aimbots and wall hacks via Discord or Telegram, even running carry services to get players ranked in competitive modes. There's even money laundering happening in some of these games, using skins or currency systems to wash real-world cash through virtual economies. And let's not forget the players themselves Studies show that 78% of players will abandon a game if cheating becomes widespread. That's catastrophic if you're running a competitive or a live service game. You lose monetization opportunities, community goodwill, and most dangerously, trust in your brand. One Reddit thread about a cheater plague can turn into a PR nightmare. So yes, cheating is a technical problem, but it's also a business risk and a design consideration. If you're building multiplayer experiences, anti-cheat needs to be a core part of your product strategy from day one, not just something you patch in later. These lessons from the game industry apply beyond games. They are tools you can use to detect fraud 
anticipate threats and keep systems resilient. Here are some techniques we're using in games that are also used in other industries. In gaming, we study how players normally behave, their patterns, their timing, their movement. That baseline helps us spot cheaters doing things that defy what's humanly possible. That same method can detect insider threats, fraud, and anomalies in real-world systems. Cheaters don't always break rules. They bend them just enough to gain an advantage. That's why anomaly detection is critical. It focuses on how someone behaves, not just what they do. This technique is now widely used in banking, cybersecurity, and even public safety analytics. And in games, real-time monitoring systems process millions of events every second. Jumps, shots, hits, locations to flag cheating in real time. And the goal isn't just accuracy, it's speed and scale. That same streaming data architecture can monitor threats as they unfold in complex environments. Game security teaches us that scalable detection requires smart systems that learn and adapt. Just like in policing, the goal isn't to catch every offender, it's to keep the system safe, fair, and trusted. Technology gives us the tools, but trust is what makes people stay. And if there's one thing that all of this makes clear, it's that the game of cat and mouse will continue with each new technological innovation to police. Whether in the virtual world or in the real world, there will be a new innovation for people looking to break the rules too. The same AI that's being used to detect anomalies is also being used to develop methods to evade detection. We just have to stay one step ahead. And in the end, building fair systems where people can thrive and trust the rules is important. What we learn in games doesn't stay in games. It can help us create a safer, smarter, more resilient society. And just like in the 80s, when we use disk copy protection, we're still in that same game, only the battlefield's bigger and the stakes are global. So in closing, I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm honored to be part of this conversation about the future of cybersecurity. Here at We Are Developers 2025, and I'm signing books and taking photos and selling merch near stage four across from the food hall. And if anyone has any questions, I can answer those now. Thanks.